Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of IWUFS. I am here, as usual, with my dad, Dr. Ian Dunbar. Hi, Dad. How you doing? I'm doing well, son. Oh, good. <laughs> and today we're going to talk more about reactivity. And today we are going to jump into uh, a specific exercise that anyone can easily do at home with their dog, or I guess not at home, but with their dog, um, called uh, park bench training. Yeah? That sound about yeah. right? Yeah. All right, Dad, how does park bench training Well, work? as I mentioned before, it's very difficult to classically condition a dog when you're moving. Okay. Because every step you take, the dog's hit by another thousand novel stimuli. Right. And so it's very important to be stationary. Right. It, it speeds things up. Which, and before you go on, I feel like that's important to point out. As you say, most people, the dog-dog reactivity manifests on leash walking. Yeah. And so this big change just... Don't walk anywhere. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Right? It's like right. when you teach a dog to walk on leash. First, well, it, you know, it, you, you do it indoors and then in the yard, right. off leash first. But when you go outside, you stand still. Right. It's surprisingly complex. It, it's surprisingly <laughs> it's simple. Yeah. It's standing still and will the dog check in with you? And right. some dogs, not for a few minutes. So, yeah, make it simple. And it's important that you're comfortable. So I, I love park benches or walls to sit on. And you want to find a fairly quiet area. Okay. Um, and this exercise during COVID really surprised me. You know, all, all of my life has been about <clears throat> early neonatal handling, early socialization, early training, off leash. Mm -hmm. um, and preventing. Preventing. Is what you're because like. treatment was time consuming. But during COVID, we went on a, a couple of short little trips. It was difficult then because we had to be masked everywhere. And mm -hmm. We'd go to little coastal cities up some California. And Laguna Beach, we took along a dog called Cash. And he was scared of his own shadow. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Gina was sick. So I said, well, I'll, I'll take Cash out. So I looked around. and There was a lovely little cliff walk in a park bench. Okay. And I sat on it. And it was quiet, but in the course of the next three hours, um, probably 200 people went by from, say, 50 dogs. Mm -hmm. it, perfect. It's normally quiet, so you're giving your dialogue to the dog because he's out in the open and he's not being bad. He's mm -hmm. not reacting. You're talking to him. You're praising him. Mm -hmm. But like you mean it. Because by, uh, by using the three adjective technique in every sentence, you concentrate the owner's brain to think of an adjective I haven't said before, so they're not focusing on how they're feeling. Yeah. So the dog thinks, I, I like sitting here, and occasional food treats. Yeah. At first, the dog may not take the food rewards, but they eventually will. Now, you want to use about definitely one to 200 food rewards here. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it can't be commercial treats, obviously. Mm -hmm. or else your dog will have a liver like a goose um, and a waistline mm -hmm. like a seal, an <laughs> elephant seal. And so I use uh, freeze-dried foods. I mean, sorry, air-dried foods, which uh -huh. I love because there's no preservatives. And the two I love on the market are Ziwi Peak and Kiwi Kitchen. And it's the shape that's important. Each piece of kibble you can easily break into four or I actually empty them on the table and I cut them into eight. Yeah. And so now you've got 10 pieces of kibble. Um, well, that's 80 food rewards. Mm -hmm. So you only need 20 pieces of kibble per sequence. Right. And remember, for a dog, it's not the size. The eating process is <laughs> that's fast. They don't taste much. They smell and smell and smell. So you can do it with a a tenth of a gram of right. food, you know, and they smell it. Like. So you're saying giving your dog an eighth of a piece of, you know, air-dried food gets you 90 to 100 percent of the value of giving them oh, a full piece. E easily. Because the act of the giving and it's the smell. It's almost equal because they are eating the smell. Uh -huh. They're savoring the smell. And the longer you hold on to it, here's another tip, the more you increase the anticipation of eating it, mm -hmm. And that's what affects the dog's brain. Yeah. And you're releasing dopamine, you know, and the dog's, you're changing the chemistry of the brain without yeah. going to a vet to buy really expensive pills. Right. Okay. So you get your first yeah. step, you get your food. You put, yeah. you put your, your food, food in a little bag to bring along. Then you find a park bench yeah. or a place to sit that's 
quiet most of the time, yeah. but people and dogs do occasionally walk by yeah. and then every we, few minutes. We so. vary our dialogue so that we are classically conditioning mm -hmm. and operantly conditioning simultaneously. Okay. And this is important because a load of people won't classically condition. Yeah. So with classical conditioning, stimulus absent, you ignore your dog. Stimulus present, you praise and give treats. Mm -hmm. And the biggest criticism I get of that is, oh, I don't want to praise in case I unintentionally reward the dog for being anxious. Right. Okay. Because with classical conditioning, <laughs> you praise the dog if the stimulus is present regardless of what the dog's doing yeah yeah so when the dog's anxious so when the stimulus isn't present yeah. either the dog reacts or not right it's okay if the dog is reacting to praise to help it out i mean the dog is scared yeah. of course you say oh it's okay it's just another and i like to talk in normal words i say it's just a dog Yes, I know he's 100 pounds. Right. Well, I know it's only three pounds. Yes. It's just You're a, a dog, dog too. It won't hurt you. It, yeah. It's one of your people. I do that. It's okay to do that as long as when the dog stops reacting mm -hmm. or doesn't react, you praise it much more. Right. So classical conditioning, stimulus absent, ignore it, stimulus present, you praise and reward. That's mm -hmm. classical conditioning. Operant conditioning, yeah, we're praising a little when it's reacting, it, when it's reacting, but when it's not reacting, I, I literally say, you know, you are just the best dog. You know how good you are? You are six treat wonderful. One, two, yeah. three, four. You really go overboard. So being faithful to the rules for classical and operant conditioning, we do them at the same time and we can do it so easily with our voice. Yeah. Again, we gotta bring back the voice to training if you have, you know, if you just say, given a click and a treat here and there, it's gonna take weeks, weeks. I went out with Cash and I, I smoked two cigars, that's how long it was, Okay. a little over three hours. I went out with a dog that was scared of his own shadow. I came back with a different dog mm -hmm. in one. It blew my mind. It changed a lot of my uh, ideas about missing out on early socialization. Mm -hmm. No, there is a lot to do with mm -hmm. adult dogs, but you've really got to troubleshoot it and do it intensively. Right. And uh, again, I get a lot of flack of that. Isn't that stressful for the dog? <laughs> yeah, but no more stressful than not doing it. Mm -hmm. So the dog has to experience the same anxiety tomorrow. Yeah. So we must, you can't criticize someone for what they do because it's stressful if you not doing it is more stressful. Mm -hmm. It's just like when, when horse whispering came yeah. out and they said, oh, but that's stressful. And, and I, I have the article, it says, you know, you're, the, the stress is being removed when the horse joins up. Mm -hmm. And I wrote back to that article and said, yeah, but it's the horse that's removing its stress. It can do that at any time by approaching the person. Mm -hmm. And the stress is not the trainer's fault. The trainer is the first person to care about this horse since foldhood. Because this has happened since he was 48 hours old, that mm -hmm. he's a bit dodgy around people, and do something about it. And all the people who are criticizing... What do they do? Just live with a stressful horse. Yeah. And they and that, it, there's a few things in dog training that really, really upset me, annoy me when I do speak my mind. And it's when people criticize others. What you're doing is stressful. What I'm doing is nothing. I'm doing, I'm doing stress-free. Now, that's not stress-free. Stress-free is you react in a, a certain way with the animal that causes very little stress but certainly less stress tomorrow because of how you've done it today. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to look at stress kind of over the dog's lifetime. Yeah, as opposed to I don't just want in this it to, one moment. Living with chronic stress and anxiety is, is crippling. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm lucky. I'm not usually a stressed out person, but I have been. And for there was one period in my life for a lengthy period and it wasn't fun. Yeah. And being able to get rid of it, and, and what, what, you know, yeah. is, is an amazing gift for the animal. So going back to the park bench routine, um, if, you, if you're imagining someone, <laughs> they have a dog, dog, reactive dog, and they're going to try this, or you could talk about what happened initially with Cash, 
Like, how does it look at the beginning? The dog, dog, reactive dog, I would imagine, is barking and lunging whenever a person... Oh, it's what I dog like, a park by. bench. The dog's hiding under the bench, and it's a Was bench. Cash hiding, or was Cash out there barking and lunging? Cash was hiding under okay. the bench. So, uh, mm -hmm. And you knew if a dog came close, and I would stop and say, my dog's really scared, please, if you could just walk around him. Yeah. Made it easier on him, but oh no, he'd go out to the end of the leash if I'd let him. Mm -hmm. He would have flown out at the end of the leash. So when you started this, was Cash accepting food treats um, during these not, walk Not for the first, oh, 15 minutes, and then I made bigger deals. Like, look what Daddy has found in his pocket. Do you want to sniff? Ah, mine. Mmm, 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 mmm. And this is when... A person's walking by? No, this is because he wouldn't take the treats. This is just in between people yeah. when it's quiet if to try and get him to take treats. doesn't take treats because he's stressed, yeah. it's going to be much more difficult to resolve the stress because it doesn't take treats. Yeah. So you want to go to a place with no people. Right. It's a different person. Like I was just talking to the chap across the road and he was saying walking his dog, he was so scared. You know, and I said, well, what you do is you come out of your house, you stand still until the dog takes a street tree then you go one step will he take another tree mm -hmm. then another step once you've gone five steps mm -hmm. you come back over known ground mm -hmm. where the dog feels comfortable and take another five steps and then you go back and forth a little farther each day i measure it by houses yeah the next day we're going six houses up back to home six houses up until eventually you've gone more than halfway around the block yeah and before you know it, you're walking around the block. But if you just walk around the block or walk to a dog park, it's very stressful for the dogs and you can't classically condition. Mm -hmm. Because it's like the dog's walking like this. I mean, I, I did my demo on stage at Pixar when they, you know, yeah. for the, the Up movie. And it's like, the dog's like, I smell cat food. Where's that cat food? I like McDonald's wrapper. Ooh, oh yeah, I love that. Oh, child screaming, don't like that. Oh, no. there's a cat, there's a cat. I know there's a cat looking at me. Cat's looking at me. Squirrels. And this is what's going through the dog's brain as you take one step. Uh -huh. And so you going, oh, good boy. Right. It doesn't <laughs> penetrate. It doesn't penetrate. Yeah. And so you want to be stationary on familiar territory. And the longer you're stationary, the more territory becomes familiar. Mm -hmm. So I do it totally stationary. I'm sitting down. I'm comfortable. Right. Because I'm going to be there for three hours. And I'll tell you what. I went out with a different person, me, I came back with a different person. I just felt a whole better about life mm -hmm. doing this because when do you ever get to sit on a park bench and just daydream watching a dog? And I watched his confidence grow in leaps and bounds. Yeah. Um, every 15 minutes, you know. Yeah. You don't see it happening, but if you think to 15 minutes ago, he's a different dog now. So it sounds like a precursor is you, you want to... Do this exercise with a dog that's eager to take food from your hands. Yes. And if your dog's not, not eager to do that, then you, you should focus on that. Um, yeah. I really like this idea of the take food. Like, we're not leaving the thresholds of the home until you take a piece of food. Yeah. And that's, you know, using the food as a secondary reinforcer. You've got it. The, I, I, I tell that. all veterinarians, when you greet a new puppy or a new adult dog coming in as a client, you offer them a piece of food. Mm -hmm. It's the best temperament test in the world because one of three things will happen. The dog takes the food. Oh, give him 50 more. Mm -hmm. It won't take you long to examine the dog. What, four minutes yeah. to do a physical exam? Use the time to keep giving treats. You'll never forget that one visit in this place. This will be my people, you know, mum and pop's treat dispensary. It's yeah. medicinal treats, you know, for the dog's brain. The dog doesn't take it. Give it to the owner. Dog takes the treat immediately. Uh oh, it's you. Yeah. As opposed to dog doesn't take the treat, give it to the owner, and the dog won't take it from the owner yeah. either. It's the location, your clinic. You see, you know the dog's cool, the dog's afraid of the clinic, or the dog's afraid of you. Right. So you mend that before you do anything. And the same thing with classic, you've got to remember about reactivity. In almost every single case presented to me, I have found out and sometimes really abruptly that dog is also reactive to people mm -hmm. and scared of the environment, including his own shadow. Mm -hmm. 
So we, we're classically conditioning them all at once. Right. But the number of times I've been snapped at or bitten by a dog that was presented as, oh no, it's dog dog reactive. They're going to be reactive about a lot of other things too. Right. Because the dog really is a pretty natural and benign stimulus. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't know, dogs can do stuff. But I, I want to go back to the park bench routine okay. and really try and troubleshoot. I want to make sure that anyone who listens to this episode um, is going to be able to do this exercise. It mm -hmm. seems relatively simple, but I also feel like there's probably some stumbling blocks that people are going to run into once they try it themselves. So I'm wondering. First of all, if you can think of anything off the top of your head where can you imagine telling someone to do this, what objections they would have? Goes, or it goes terribly wrong. Or where could it go bad? Yeah. yeah. Well, first thing, you want the dog on a short leash. Okay. I, like, I always use a six-foot leash in training, but I'll hold it four feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've got it wrapped around my hand. Mm -hmm. It's in my fist. And my fist is down here, and I hold it with my other hand. So if that dog lunges, mm -hmm. he's only going to get four feet. Right. And then I inform people when they're coming by. I mm -hmm. don't say he's dog-dog reactive or people react. scared. Yeah. I just say he's really scared. Please, mm -hmm. if you could walk around him. And you'll get some people who stand still. And then I'll say, would you like to toss some treats to him? Mm -hmm. And before we know it, you know, because he's meant to be dog-dog reactive, right. he will go out and you teach the people to get him to sit before giving the treat. Now, come and sit and hold on to the treat. Mm -hmm. So he sniffs it and mm -hmm. looks at you. Oh, you've got him to come and do a sit-stay. Mm -hmm. um, so controlling the people is a biggie. Yeah. And, and you can't get angry. I keep away from him. Right. Immediately, your dog will just be triggered and take off and you've, Caused right. it. You've got to be chill. You right? stick you with be the breezy. dog and you talk him through it. Yeah. And so if the person is reaching for the dog, I would say, it's okay, relax. They don't understand instructions. They're going <laughs> to frighten you by reaching for you. Uh, it's, uh, I'm being serious. Yeah. Um, no, it seems like a great way to handle it where by talking to the dog, you know, saying, I'm sorry, this person does not understand what I, we're asking of them. You know, like, yeah. don't, don't worry. We used to get this all the time with assistance dogs, you know, which often wear this, do not pet, I'm working. Um, and I said, I think we should change this. That's, that's a little bit rude. Mm -hmm. Let's say, please don't interrupt me. I'm trying to concentrate and work. Uh -huh. You know, and then underneath, a little flat, I'm off duty now. You can say hello to me if you like. <laughs> uh -huh. Or if you really don't understand please don't interrupt me instructions, yeah. let my person know, and they'll let you interrupt me and stroke me. Right. That's what I'm trying, you know, whatever. So controlling the people is very important. Yeah. And so people walk by, people walk by with their dogs, your dog might react. That's expected. Yeah. Right. And so that's, how do you, how do you deal with, you know, someone walking by well, and your dog react? That's where you're kind of stuck. So another bit of pride, you can't say, oh, there's a good dog, good dog. If your dog reacts towards theirs, because they would take more umbrage to that than if the dog reacted to them. Right. People, when another dog reacts towards theirs, dog, you are a leper and your dog's a leper. The last thing I want to hear is you praising yeah. your dog. So I would probably use a secondary reinforcer. And, and this is real advanced level training, but it's so easy to do. Mm -hmm. I'll explain it very quickly. Everyone understands click and treat. Click a neutral stimulus, and we go click, treat, click, treat, click, treat. So mm -hmm. therefore now the click predicts the treat. The click now is what we call a secondary reinforcer because it predicts what's coming. Okay. I like to get an object, and I use a tub toy, which we'll talk about later how we use it. But I tell the dog, you know, come sit take it, take the tug toy. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not even like the tug toy. It may have to shake that, touch it, pick it up, drop it, pick it up, hold it. Yeah. When the dog takes the tug toy, I say, thank you, on the couch. Come, sit, take the tug toy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, chest scratch. Mm -hmm. and then belly rub, or throw a tennis ball, or throw a frisbee, yeah. or, you know, or give it a piece of unbelievable treats like some leftover lamb yeah you know or a little bit of beef or chicken you know so the dog says wow 
this tug toy, man, it's like the key to everything that's wonderful in life. Yeah, I call it a mega secondary reinforcer. Mm -hmm. So what you can do when the other dog approaches, you say, look what daddy has. See, the dog knows you've got it, but then you pull it out. Mr. Tugs, happy to be out. You know what that means? That means another dog is coming. I can see him along. I talk the dog the whole way through it, waggling yeah. the tug. And as soon as the dog walks by, I say, oh, Mr. Tug's tired. He wants to go sleepy bites. Mm -hmm. And that's pure and simple, uh, pure and simple classical conditioning. The praise and the rewards are building yeah. till the other dog is right by you. As soon as he starts to retreat, but still in sight, no. reward. Do remember, if your dog may be extremely inhibited from lunging as another dog is approaching, as soon as that dog does walk by, the inhibition is removed. Mm. Uh -huh. and, and this is common of a lot of shepherd dogs. Mm -hmm. All the shepherd dogs, not just the big ones, the little ones too. So I'm talking Germans and Aussies and all, all sorts of things. As soon as that dog starts retreating, <coughs> They're going out, and uh -huh. I think it's a cheap shot. Right. And it's where the fearful part of the vacillation is higher than um, the sort of, how should I put it, the excitement part. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the fear and the excitement have both been inhibited yeah. by an approaching dog. So just be aware. Yeah. But so you were saying how, you know, like when uh, the, another dog is walking by and your dog's reacting. It's okay to comfort them with your voice, yes. but obviously you don't want to praise them because, primarily because of what the other owner is going to think. Yeah. But it would be okay to say something like, it's all right, buddy. You know, like, you don't need to be scared. Like, there's just another dog. And that's not going to set the other owner off. Like, that's not going to offend the, them. The right? way I would take that quantum leap, if they do react, <clears throat> I'm now cued, but well, they're going to stop reacting at some point, mm -hmm. the farther the distance. The instant they stop reacting, I say, oh, good boy, there's a good boy. Mm -hmm. and that's a case for the tug toy, not just coming out, but letting the dog take it and having a little tug sitting in the chair. Right. Okay. So it's okay to console and to, to try and give it confidence as long as you give much better feedback when the reactivity stops. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get through the whole thing without reactivity, and you'll gradually be able to read your dog after half an hour, an hour, right. he's much calmer now. You can try and go for it and praise heavily and bring the tug out as they're approaching, when they're right by you. And then as they walk away, well, good dog, then put it away. Mm -hmm. So if you, I say the principles of classical conditioning and often conditioning are both so simple that you've got to get them right. Right. Okay, so I think we've, I think we've got it pretty figured out. I'm going to try and review for the people at home to see if, if uh, we can make clear how you would do this. I'll sit back and learn. All right, so... I'll learn what I said. <laughs> the, the first thing you need, you need your dog to be happy to take food from your hand. Yep. Then you're going to bring some food, and it's best if you can cut it up into little pieces so that you can give a great many number of pieces of food. Mm -hmm. Like the number, not the size. Like hundreds of pieces of food. 200 usually I give. I mean, uh -huh. I've counted it because I know I cut up, you know, 20 or 25 pieces of kibble. Right. And then you're going to want to go to... That's 200. A place. Cool. <laughs> a place where you can sit. You can be stationary. Yeah. That's a key part. You don't want to move through the environment. And comfortable. And comfortable. Comfortable will relieve your stress and allowing the dog to hide underneath mm -hmm. helps relieve the dog's stress. So that's where a park bench is really kind it's of ideal. ideal. Um, because you're going to be spending a while there. Yeah. That like this process is going to take time. And if you can spend two or three hours doing one of these sessions, you can make a lot of improvement in yes. the dog behavior in a single session. In, yes. All right. So you sit down on the park bench. And maybe you offer your dog a couple pieces of food just to verify they've taken food yeah. and that they're comfortable there. And then you wait and largely ignore your dog when nothing's there. Periodically, mm -hmm. every minute, two minutes, I would say, hello there, and offer a food reward because he's lying down right. and quietly. And it's an unfamiliar environment. And, uh, uh -huh. Yeah, so that's pure and simple operant conditioning, but in an unfamiliar environment, which would be classical conditioning. Okay, so you sit there. If nothing's happening, occasionally you praise your dog and offer them one piece of food. Yeah. Um, if another dog starts, if another person starts approaching, mm -hmm. 
um, you would talk to your dog and praise them for being good, if they're good. Mm -hmm. And if they're reacting, you would try to calmly soothe them with your voice. Yeah. Keeping in mind. And distract them with food. They may not eat it, but mm -hmm. they'll sniff it. But you try yeah, to get their I'm attention trying. with food. And after that person has passed, if the dog were to stop react, when the dog stopped reacting, you would try and capture that moment. Yeah. With amped up praise. Yeah. And um, maybe you you might powerful. try to incorporate the tug toy. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you would also try to warn the people as they come closer that, hey, just so you know, like my dog's a little afraid of people. If you could give us a little wide berth, that would be helpful, especially early on. But more so if they had a dog. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. So you're really magnifying the dialogue there and a lot more owner, you know, the stranger control. Right. Done so, calmly. Same thing with the dog uh, owner walking by with the dog. You give them some warning. If your dog is calm, you can really enthusiastically praise them because they're they're in the presence of the stimulus that's tricky and they're doing the right thing. So operant plus classical conditioning equals mega reinforcement. Yeah. If they are reacting, you are calmly trying to soothe them and get their attention back on you. And as soon as they stop reacting, you're once again praising and rewarding, reinforcing with whatever you, you know. Want. I should have been writing down what you were saying there, because then <laughs> I could have said it initially much quicker. But right. we got across. Well, we might have to write it down for people second. as well. <laughs> yes. But I think it's a great exercise, and I think what's so exciting about it is it seems relatively simple to do. You know that mm -hmm. anyone can do this. They don't need to actually go out and recruit someone to help them, which I think is a stumbling block for a lot of people. Yeah. So thank you very much, Dad. Thank you, Jamie. It's a great exercise. And if you have a dog, dog, react to dog, we hope you will try it soon. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. They'll have to get tickets to Laguna Beach first. Did, did I say it only works in Laguna you, Beach? You didn't say that. No, and I really hope it doesn't because that will be another stumbling <laughs> block. All right. See you next time. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.